this video, we're going to look at the third part of chapter 20, which is going to focus on energy and nuclear reactions and on uh, spontaneous fission. So um, an important question is, is how are nuclear reactions used to power things like uh, nuclear power plants? Or if you just think about the energy of a nuclear bomb, um, there's such a tremendous amount of energy that's given off in such a short period of time. So where does this energy come from? And the concept for this relates back to chapter seven when we talked about the mass energy relation um, from Einstein. So the Einstein relation is that E is equal to mc squared, where if we have a certain amount of mass, the relationship between the, the, that amount of mass and the corresponding amount of energy is the speed of light squared, where the speed of light is equal to 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So if you take that value of 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second and you square it and multiply it by even a tiny amount of mass, you still get a tremendous amount of energy. So um, the energy that's released by these reactions is due to the fact that some small amount of mass is converted to energy. So the energy in nuclear reactions is due to conversion of mass to energy. So you can actually use um, you can actually use the same equ equation to look at chemical reactions because chemical reactions give off energy. So that must mean that when a chemical reaction takes place. Um, it, the delta H associated with it, there must be a small amount of mass that's converted in, a, um, in even a chemical reaction. So, for example, if we were to just look at a chemical reaction, um, like, for example, if we were to take carbon solid plus oxygen gas, and we were to make this go to carbon dioxide through combustion, the delta H for this reaction is uh, minus 393 0.5 kilojoules. So if we wanted to use E equals mc squared to figure out how much mass that corresponds to, uh, the way we could set that up is we could say, well, okay, if E is equal to mc squared, then the mass would be equal to the energy divided by the speed of light squared. So if we plug the energy in, we have to convert it to joules. So this would be minus 393.5 times 10 to the third joules divided by 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which we're gonna square. This would give us a mass of 4.37 times 10 to the minus 12 kilograms. Now it's important that we take some notes about the units. When we do this, the units for mass uh, have to be in kilograms and the units for energy have to be in joules. Um, that's just basically uh, that's just basically how those equations are set up in physics. So um, when we the output of this is going to be in kilograms. So we get something very very tiny. We get a, a pico kilogram. Um, so when this carbon and oxygen come together and make carbon dioxide, there must be some small amount of mass that's lost that generates this energy, and it's very, very, very small. So an analytical balance, for example, can only measure 0 0.001 grams, which is about, which is a milligram, or a tenth of a milligram. So this is um, many, many orders of magnitude smaller than that. Okay, so now let's look at this with nuclear reactions. So mass and energy in nuclear reactions. Much more energy is released in these reactions because more mass is converted to energy than in a typical chemical reaction. So let's take a look at an example, for example. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So um, if we take U-238, um, which has an atomic number of 92, and we let this do an alpha decay. So this gives us 234 uh, thorium plus a alpha particle. So 
if you look at this, it would seem like all the mass is accounted for. But we have to go in and we have to look at the exact precise mass of each one of these things. Because what we'll find is that even though it looks like all the mass, is, all the, all the mass and subatomic particles are accounted for, there is a slight amount of mass that's not accounted for in these reactions. And that the mass that's not accounted for in these reactions is converted to energy. So we're going to take a look at a table um, in the textbook. And this table is um, shown here. And you can see every subatomic particle and even many different nuclei. So you can see here's the uranium atoms um, in this section of the chart. This gives the exact mass 233.03963. Um, this gives the exact mass out to several decimal places. So we're going to use these very precise masses for each one of those compounds um, in the in the problem that we're doing and then see what the difference in mass is. So if we look up the mass for U238, we get an exact mass of 238.05078 grams. And then if we look up the exact mass of the thorium, we get 234.03660 grams. And then for the alpha particle, we get 4.00260 grams. So these are the exact masses. So what we're going to look for is a change in mass. Now normally, what we should get for a change in mass in any reaction is zero, right? We, we've said that in the past, and this is, a tr this is true, that we conserve mass. So whatever we put in the, the reactants, we should get out in the products. That is true, and, um, but it's, it's missing one piece because mass and energy are essentially linked by the Einstein relation. So yes, we must conserve mass and we must conserve energy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't convert mass to energy. Just as long as whatever mass and energy we put in, we get out the same amount of mass plus energy as a product. So what we're going to find is that we do lose a little bit of mass in this case, but what that mass does is it gets converted into energy. So we're not really destroying mass or energy, we're just converting um, the mass into a little bit of energy and the whole thing is conserved. So let's, let's, do the, 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 let's do the math here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of the reactants minus the mass of the products to get the difference. So in this case, we're going to take the 238.05078 grams, and we're going to subtract from that 234.03660 grams plus 4.00260 grams. Let me just fix that. Okay, so now if we have conservation of mass, we should get an answer of zero, but it turns out that we get a very, very small difference, and the delta mass in this case is going to equal um, 0 0.011 grams. So compared to the chemical reaction, which we had in the previous slide, the chemical reaction was 4.37 times 10 to the minus 12 kilograms, or 4.37 times 10 to the minus 9 grams. Here, on the other hand, we're getting something on the order of uh, 0.01 grams. So this is a much, much larger amount of mass that's being changed. So what we have to do, though, is we have to make sure we get the units right. So we have to convert this change in mass into kilograms. So we have to divide this by 1,000 grams for every one kilogram. And with that, we're going to get 1.158 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms. And we need the kilograms to work with the Einstein relation. So if we plug this into E equals mc squared, uh, if this is our change in mass, then we can say that uh, 1.158 times 10 to the minus 5 
kilograms times 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared, we're going to get an energy of 1.04 times 10 to the 12th joules, which is a massive amount of energy. And this is joules per mole in this case, because we are treating this as one mole of uranium, one mole of thorium, and one mole of alpha particles. So if we were to have one mole of uranium, or 238 grams of it, um, all undergo a alpha decay all at the same time, we would get out 1.04 times 10 to the 12th joules.